A week of foul-tempered debate in Europe ended this afternoon as finance ministers agreed new quota rates for trade with the United States. In Brussels is our economics correspondent, Peter O'Hanrahan. Peter, what is the new rate? It's 30%, Chris. Agreement was a long time coming, but in the end, the decision was unanimous. What was the Germans' reaction? Because they've been holding out for 40%, haven't they? That's right. Uh, when I spoke to Finance Minister Reinhardt earlier today, he said he didn't like the deal, but he had to go along with it. Really? You spoke to him yourself. You managed to pin him down. He's a pretty tricky man, isn't he? That's right. Where did you get hold of him? He was in the hotel. And you conducted a conversation with him about the quota rates? That's right. He said he didn't like it, but he had to go along with it. What language did you conduct this conversation in, Peter? German. You spoke to him about the technicalities of the deal in German? Yes. So what's the German for 30%? 30 percent? 30 percent. 30 percent. Yes. And what about that quote you attributed to him? I don't like it, but I'll have to go along with it. That's what he said. How did he say it? I don't like it, but I'll have to go along with it. In German, how did he say it? Ich nichten lichten. Presumably you mean rufen Sie ein Taxi bitte, sonst wir passiv meinem Flur. Yes. No, you don't, Peter, because that means get me a taxi, I'm late for my plane. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Did you speak to the German finance minister about the new deal this afternoon? No. And what was his reaction? I don't know. Peter, thank you. It's just been announced... Yeah, thanks. It's just been announced there's to be a special inquiry into the government's handling of the Froome shipping deal which flew to pieces last month amid accusations of gross ministerial misconduct. Our economics correspondent, Peter O'Hanrahan, is with the Minister for Ships, Michael Crane. He's just prized him out of an emergency meeting. I'm with the Minister for Ships, Michael That's what Crane, everything I've just said comes spewing straight back out of his stupid meeting. slab of a face. Mr. Crane, choppy waters for the government. Not at all, Peter. Um, this procedure was entirely proper, and I think the inquiry will prove that the government's handling of this matter was entirely proper. So the government's ship, back on course? Absolutely. Back to you, Chris. Peter, what the hell was that? This man's made a big-scale cock-up here. You let him get away with it. Now, let me speak to him. Put your earpiece next to his head and stand still. Now, Minister, there's reason to believe that you lied to the House. How do you answer that? Well, that is a very serious and unfounded allegation, and I'll be making a statement to the House based on the preliminary inquiry next week. A week is a long time in politics. Rab Butler. Shut up, Peter. Now, Minister, did you or did you not lie to the House? I will be making a full statement to the House next it's week. It's a simple question, yes or no. Did you or did you not lie? I, um... As the Minister for Ships sprawls on the pin, it's back to you, Chris. No, it isn't, Peter. He's about to answer the question. He's about to admit to lying to the House. You've let him get away again. Where's he gone? Over there. Well, get him back. He's in a cab. Peter, you've lost the news! What are you going to say? Sorry. Look like you mean it. Look down at the ground and say sorry. I'm sorry. Peter, next time you cross the road, don't bother looking. Sorry. The day today, because fact into doubt won't go. The American car company General Motors have today announced a cut in their workforce at their plant in Detroit. Our economics correspondent, Peter O'Hanrahan, is there at the moment. Peter, what's going on? Chris, it's a mass redundancy measure. It's the biggest layoff in American industrial history. 35,000 jobs in one fell swoop. Gone. 35,000? Yes. Peter, there's only 25,000 people at the plant. That's right, Chris. Mass redundancy on an unprecedented scale. But would you mind telling me how the plant can function on minus 10,000 workers? I don't know, Chris. You tell me. I'll tell you what, Peter. You mean 3,500 workers have been sacked? No. 35,000. It's all here. Let me see what you've got down there. It's 3,500, you're Peter, right. I want, to I want to see it. I don't want to hear anything more out of your mouth. I don't believe it. Now, show me your notes. No. Yes. It, it's 3,500. Show me. I don't believe what you're saying. I just want to see the numbers. Now, hold them up. Hold them up and keep them up. And rotate them 180 degrees in my favour. Do it. Peter, what's that? 
I don't have the monitor, Chris. I can't see what you you're doing. You know what I'm talking about. It's just above your right eye. Yes. A cobweb. And how's a cobweb going to dig you out of your numerical mess? I don't know. Peter, you're lying in a news grave. Do you know what's written on your headstone? News. Peter, thank you. Peter Hanrahan, live in Detroit. The Day Today. Bagpiping fact into news. The Day Today 24 Live now stays with those terrorist attacks in New York and Washington. Both towers now gone. Later, what is a hijacked airliner and how does it crash? But first, our correspondent Peter O'Hanrahan is in New York at the moment. He went there to cover the World Trade Organization talks due to start today at the World Trade Center. He's on the line now. Peter, where are you and what's going on? It's a clear, crisp morning in New York, Chris. A crackle of anticipation among the delegates at breakfast. A lot at stake here. These talks could be the big yes or no for the Eastern economies. Right, so Peter, can you tell us exactly what the situation is currently in New York? Well, the situation, I'd say, it's eggs over easy for the Germans, eggs over not bad for the Japanese, and <laughs> eggs over pretty grim for the Russians. So the meetings are going ahead? That's right, Chris. And where are they being held? Here at the World Trade Center. You're at the World Trade Center? Yes. Whereabouts exactly in the World Trade Center are you? I'm, I'm in, that, uh, in the restaurant, the Windows on the World restaurant, Chris. Floor 107, sipping a cappuccino. Floor 107 no longer gives a particularly good view of New York. Well, it does from where I'm sitting, It's Chris. now part of the basement. I think... <laughs> uh, Pulling my leg, Chris. Are you near a television? Yes. I don't, I don't I'd like you to turn it on. I'm going to a television in the restaurant. There's one, one of those... Yes, just get on with it, corner. please. Right, the television's on. Tell me what you can see. Well, it's, it's quite bizarre. I'm actually looking at a, an image of the World Trade Center. I would almost be looking at myself if I waved. Uh, what can you see? Well... There's a, there's a plane in, in one of them. Yeah, actually, we didn't hear that. Uh, the, the sound insulation in these buildings is extraordinary. There is a plane that... Keep watching, Peter. What? Ah. Ah. Oh, my God. Uh, one of the towers has collapsed. Fortunately, not the one I'm in. The other one... The one I'm in is, is one of the towers. The, the other tower... The tower I'm in is collapsing. I'm collapsing, Chris, under the sheer... I've managed... I'm out. I'm out. Uh, I'm very far, run. I'm not there. Where are you? I'm. I'm in a hotel in Midtown, the Marriott, my hotel, in my room. Why did you say you were at the World Trade Center? Because that's where I was supposed to be this morning. You overslept. I slept longer than I'd anticipated. Would you like to revise your appraisal of the situation in New York in light of what you've just gleaned? Yes, I can, Chris. Go ahead. I'm a man standing at a window of his hotel room. Very grey day. A very grey day for the world, Chris. Uh, it seems like a movie... Peter, you've added nothing. That's Peter O'Hanrahan from New York on a day which yes, will go down. Day. Be quiet!